Okay, so this is calculus two English lecture. So I'm going to do everything in English. Okay, my office hours are Tuesdays two to four p.m., Thursdays three to five p.m., and my office is in Bengmagwan three eleven. So this is my email address y o o n j s o n g at s s u dot a c dot k r, and this is the phone number. All these are on the syllabus. 강의 계획서에 있습니다. Right. And the grading, there will be three exams on Thursdays, October 8th, November 12th, December 17th. So it is 25% each, so all together it will be 75%. There will be 10 homeworks, it will be 20% of your grade, and it will be due on Thursdays at the beginning of the class. If you give it to me, five minutes late. For example, we start at 12, right? So if you hand in the homework at 12 or 6, it becomes a late homework. And I don't accept any late homework. If you have to miss a class or something, then you can send me the pictures of all the pages of your homework via email in due time, okay? And I have a zero policy. That is, if you copy your solution from somewhere else, from your friend, from the web, from the manual, anything, right, then you will get zero points. So do your own work. So I will collect 10 homeworks, and that is 20%. And the attendance is 5%. If you have three lates, it becomes one absence. And if you come more than 20 minutes late, then it becomes an absence. Understood? Okay. So for the homework and everything that I do here, it will be posted on eCampus as a PDF file. So you have a reference to it, and then you will have a video clip as well. We are taking the camera. Right? We are doing videotaping as well. So you have a reference to everything. Any question? Okay, then let's get into the polar coordinates. Who didn't get the handout? Oh, I'm sorry, that's mine and this is yours. Yeah. And this is the textbook. Stuart, right? Stuart's calculus. You don't have to buy it. You don't have to carry it all the time. I'm going to hand out my own printout here. So that should be enough. Okay. Okay, so let's get started. So, so far, what we have done R, X comma Y. So which is X? Is the horizontal X or Y? This is X and this is Y. So if we have 3 comma 5, then we count from the origin. We do three steps. And then we do five steps. And we put the dot there. What did I make? What is this? You know, this is a rectangle, right? Uh -huh. So x, y coordinates are good for rectangular shape. So these are called rectangular coordinates. Rectangular. The bad thing about this is, though, a drawback about rectangular coordinates is if I have a nice circle, circle is nice, uh -huh. but is this a function? Can I write this as a function of x? Mm, it is not, why not? To be a function for each x, how many y? Exactly one y, but for point right there, there are two different y coordinates which corresponds to the same x ray, so it is not a function. Mm -hmm. So maybe we need to invent some other coordinate system which will give circle as a function. So what we'll do is polar coordinates. Polar coordinates are good for circular shape. Okay? So let's start. 
So everyone has their hand out, right? So let's read. So polar, polar coordinate. So I'll tell you what polar means in a moment. Okay. Structure. Let's read. 시작. Structure. A plane with a fixed number line, polar axis with origin pole. So we are still representing a plane. Plane. 평면이죠. Plane, right? Uh huh. So on a plane with a fixed number line. What is a number line? Right. Number line has a direction. Number line has a direction. Somewhere here there will be the origin, zero. And when I put the arrow like this, it means numbers are increasing this way. Right? Uh -huh. That is number line. So in a plane, we have a fixed number line. So it has a direction. This is the increasing direction. And then this is the origin. Because it is a number line, there should be some origin. So it will go like 1, 2, minus 1, minus 2, etc. Right? So in a plane, we put a fixed number line with the origin. What we need is that. That's all. And this number line is called polar axis. This number line is called what? Polar axis, okay? And the origin is called what? Pole. It is fixed. Get it? Okay. So that's what we have. Now we want to represent R comma theta. R theta. Okay? So what you have to remember is always theta first. You look at theta first. Okay? So for example, if we have for example, let's say 3 comma pi over 4. Okay? So which is R and which is theta? R is 3, theta is pi over 4. So what you do is you do theta first. Here is my polar axis. I'm going to rotate the polar axis by pi over 4. Pi over 4 is what degree? In degree measure, what is it? 45, 45 degrees, right? Uh, so do I go up or do I go down? We go up, exactly. Uh -huh. So I'm going to rotate my polar axis by 45 degrees like this. 45 degrees, yeah? Okay. Remember, that is still my increasing direction. And there we put R. R is the directed distance from the pole. So on that rotated axis, we go by how much? Positive 3. So this is pi over 4 rotated. And from the pole, from the pole, do we go this way? Do we go this way or that way? Number one, number two. Number one, positive three. Get it? Uh -huh. So the point will be somewhere here where the distance is three and this is pi over four. So that's how we plot a polar coordinate, r comma theta. So if you look at number two, go ahead and do a, b, and I'll give you one more. c is minus three comma pi over four. Go ahead and plot this.
So when you draw the axis, is this right or is that right? Which one is correct? Number one, number two. What do you have to start with? Do you have to start with one or two? Oh, you have to start with two. All we need is polar axis and the pole, right? Huh? So this is your usual x, y. It's not this. We're doing r theta. So you have polar axis and the pole, right? So this is my polar axis. To do A, which do we do first? Square root of 2 or minus 5 pi over 4? Minus 5 pi over 4. It is minus angle, so do we go this way or this way? Number 1, number 2. Number 2. We have to rotate this. Minus 5 pi over 4. What will happen? It will be like this, and where is my arrow? Here or here? There, right? Uh huh. Yep. So everyone agree that this is minus five pi over four, like this. Minus pi and pi over four more, right? Okay. So it is the polar axis is rotated by this angle. And then it is square root of two. So I have to measure square root of two. It is positive. So is it in number one or number two? Which one? In number one. How far away? Square root of two away. Get it? Okay. So the point will be here. This is A, where the distance is root 2. Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay, how about B? Minus 2 comma 0, which is angle? 0 is the angle, right? So this is my polar axis, the angle is 0. Do I need to rotate my axis or not? Nah, so leave it like that, and it is minus 2. So is it in number 1 or number 2? Where? Number 2. How, how far away? Distance of 2. Get it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is B. Here, the distance is 2. Okay, let's do C. So, I have to rotate my axis up or down? Uh, by how much? By how much? Pi over 4, 45 degrees. So, I rotate it. Then the increasing direction will be here, right? But R is minus 3. So, is that on this side or that side? That side, exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. So this is pi over 4, but it is minus 3. So it will be here, C, and the distance is 3. Fine? Okay, so that's how we plot it. Any question up to here? Okay, so fill in the blanks. If I have r theta, right? Uh -huh. If I keep the r, the same thing. What is the equal to? This is the point corresponding to this coordinate, is that right? Pi over 4, 
positive three. Can you give me a different angle which gives you the same position? Pi over four plus two pi, exactly. Pi over four plus two pi. Two pi is 360 degree rotation, right? Uh-huh, sure. How about four pi? Same thing twice. How about six pi? How about minus two pi? Pi over four minus two pi. Pi over four minus two pi, right? How about minus four pi? Pi over four minus four pi. See that? Ah, uh, so actually here I, I can put pi over four plus any even multiple of pi, plus or minus, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. So it is three comma pi over four, we can put that as two and pi, where n is zero plus or minus one plus or minus two, etc. It gives you the same exact point. When I keep same R, when R is still positive. So go ahead and fill in the blanks. P R theta. So P R theta is, what can we put there? P R, what? Uh, theta plus 2n pi, uh -huh. where n is 0 plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2 where n is an integer. Get it? Okay. So coming back to here, what if I change my 3 into minus 3? Okay, so I want to change this into minus 3. Uh -huh. Then it should not be pi over 4, it should be Somewhere here, right? Uh huh. Okay. So minus three. Which angle is this angle right there? Uh, pi over four. So pi over four, either plus pi or pi over four minus pi. Agree? How about pi over four plus three pi? Will that work? Pi over four plus. 2 pi, pi, one more pi, so that's 3 pi. Get it? Uh -huh. So when I change this r into minus r, then I can put it here in generic form, pi over 4 plus what? Uh, any odd multiple of pi plus or minus. So how do I represent odd multiple? Even is 2n. Odd is 2n plus 1 or 2n minus 1. Right. Uh huh. Okay. So for that, for this, we have to move this coordinate here. So let's fill in here. So when I change r into minus r, it will be theta plus. 2n plus 1 quantity pi, where n is still 0 plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2, etc. Get it? Yeah. This gives you essential difference between polar and rectangular. In the rectangular, if I give you the point 3, 5, uh, I mean, if I give you this point, right? If I give you this point right there, how many coordinates can you give me that represents this point? This point is 3 from 0, 5 from 0 on the y-axis. If I give you this point, right? How many representations can you give me? Exactly one. 
So rectangular coordinate is a unique representation. Whereas the polar coordinate is, for one point, there are how many different representations? Infinitely many different representations. So polar coordinates are not unique representation. Okay, so let's read here is, here is she. That is the polar coordinate unique for each point like the rectangular coordinates? The answer is no. Uh -huh. Infinitely many representations are possible. No. Any question? Okay. So now let's look at the relationship between polar and rectangular. Okay, let's read. Chida. Relations between polar and rectangular. Sometimes rectangular coordinates are called Cartesian. Cartesian comes from Descartes. Descartes. Yeah, because he he invented this coordinate system, right? So let's look at the relationship. You know, express x, express x and y in terms of r and theta, and we have to consider the issues with non-uniqueness of the polar coordinates. Okay, so. Express x and y in terms of r and theta. So we are given x and y. So we have x and y rectangular coordinate system x and y. Okay, so let's say the point is right there. So in the rectangular coordinate system, we can write this as x0, comma, y0. Is that right? What does that mean? X0 comma Y0, what does that mean? This is X0. This is Y0. That's what it means, right? Uh -huh. So given X0 and Y0, we have to represent that in terms of R and theta. R and theta has what and what? Polar axis and pole. Right? Okay. So given XY coordinate system, where should I put the polar axis? Origin should be my pole. And the X axis is my polar axis. Okay? Uh huh. So I take this origin as my pole and X axis as polar axis. And then we draw a triangle like this so that we can have theta. Theta is actually this theta right there. Or this theta right there. Or this theta right there. There is no unit theta. So first you select theta that you like. And then according to your theta you select R either plus or minus. Get it? Okay. So for theta, I can take, I can use this formula. What's tangent theta? Tangent theta is change in y over change in x. So depending upon my sign, theta can be somewhere here. So select theta using this formula. So once you select theta, so it is this for theta and for r. r is the distance from the pole to this point, right? Uh -huh. What is it? x0 squared plus y0 squared is r squared and you decide the sign of r according to the theta that you selected. 
Make sense? Okay. So select data first using this. And then we do r squared is x squared, x zero squared plus y zero squared. Select the sign of r accordingly. Why can we select? Select. Why do we have a freedom of choice? Because the polar coordinates are not unique. Get it? Yep. Uh -huh. So remember these two equations. Any question? So you will have to memorize this. Okay, now the other way around, express R and theta in terms of X and Y. So, now we are given R and theta. Okay, so we have polar axis and pole. And the point is somewhere here, let's see. Okay. Like this, so this is theta, the point is here. If it were this angle, it would be minus that, but suppose the point is right there. So I am given with polar coordinates. Now to represent that in terms of x and y, I have to put x and y axis on top of it, right? Where should I put the x axis? On the polar axis. Where do I put y axis? They have to intersect at the origin and it should be perpendicular to the x-axis, right? Get it? So I'm given with this to represent this in terms of x and y, I have to put x and y axis. How do I do it? I put x-axis on top of the polar axis uh -huh. and then I put y axis so that they are perpendicular and they intersect at the pole. Get it? Yes? Okay, now what we do is we can draw a circle. What is the distance from here to there? That's R. If I choose this as a positive angle, that's R. So this is R here. That distance here. Okay, then I can draw a big circle whose radius is R. Okay, and theta is given. So, what is this? What's x? This is what comma what? From your trigonometry, 삼각함수. What is it? R cosine theta, R sine theta, exactly. Uh -huh. So, R cosine theta, R sine theta. So, this is x and this is y. Again, you will have to memorize this. Any question? Okay, so for example, Suppose I am given x comma y as minus 3 minus 5. Okay. Represent this in terms of r and theta. Go ahead.
So let's do this together. So this is what x is, x and that's y. Uh -huh. So we're given with rectangular coordinates. Okay, do you agree that it is this point? Minus 3 comma minus 5? Yep. Uh -huh. So we do what first? Tangent theta is y0 over x0. So that is 5 over 3, right? Uh-huh. Where is that data? Data is tangent inverse of 5 over 3. For inverse function, tangent is not 1 to 1. So we have to look at only one part of tangent. So this is the graph of tangent. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So 5 over 3, do we find it here or here? Where is 5 over 3 located? I want tangent theta is 5 over 3, so I look 5 over 3 from here. 5 over 3 is bigger than 1. At 1, what is corresponding angle? Pi over 4, 45 degrees. So 5 over 3 will correspond to an angle which is bigger than pi over 4, less than pi over 2. Get it? So if I set this as my alpha, theta as alpha, so at 1, this corresponds to pi over 4. 5 over 3 is an angle bigger, bigger than 1, so it will correspond to something. I'm going to call that alpha. So alpha is bigger than pi over 4, less than pi over 2. Agree? Okay. Then coming back to here, right? Okay, then where is my alpha? Tell me where my alpha is. 1, 2, 3, 4, where? Huh? 1, 2, 3, 4. Alpha is pi over 4 to pi over 2. Where is it? Here, right? That's my alpha. Then I have to choose R as plus or minus? Minus. Or you can do pi minus alpha. It's okay. Yeah? It's all same point. Uh -huh. So this is alpha and this is also alpha. Mm -hmm. Right. So one possible representation is so r squared is x minus three squared plus minus five squared, which is how much? Thirty four. Uh, so r is plus or minus square root of thirty four, right? So you select accordingly, whatever you like. So one possible one possible answer is. Alpha, comma, alpha is tangent inverse of 5 over 3. Hmm? Alpha, comma, minus, ah, it should be the other way around. Always R first. Okay? So, oops. Okay, so always R first. So, minus square root of 34, comma, alpha. Alpha is tangent inverse of 5 over 3. This is one possible answer. Huh? Give me one with square root of 34. What should be the angle? Mm, I can do that plus pi. I can do alpha plus pi. Or I can do alpha minus pi. Get it? Yeah. Uh -huh. So this is one possible answer is pi minus tangent inverse 5 over 3. There are many possible answers. These are only two possible answers. not minus. I, I go pi and then subtract alpha. Uh, I, I go pi, uh, right, right, right. Uh -huh. It should be 
right? It should be pi. Pi is here. Yeah, pi plus, right? Uh -huh. Pi plus L. So what I meant was minus pi minus tangent inverse pi over 3. That works? Minus pi plus. Is this right? Oh, okay. so, yeah, there are many possible answers. Any question? So, so far we have seen what the polar coordinates are, how to plot the points, and representations in terms of x and y. Now let's look at the graph. Let's read, 시작. Graph of a polar equation in R and theta, the set of all points P that correspond to polar coordinates R theta that satisfy the equation. So it's the set of all points that correspond to polar coordinates R theta. In A, R is 2. What does it say about theta? It says polar coordinates R theta that satisfy the equation. So for example, if I have 2 comma 0, does this polar coordinate satisfy this equation? Yes, R is 2. Right? Mm -hmm. How about 2 comma pi over 4? Does it satisfy this equation? Does this polar coordinate satisfy this equation? Why? R is 2. So it is R comma theta. Theta can be any angle that you like. Okay? Right. So can you imagine the set of points which satisfy this equation? So, so here, to draw the polar coordinates, to draw the graph, this is my polar axis and this is the plane and that's the pole. Right? When I put x Y here, what I'm doing is I am drawing a polar equation on an XY plane considering X-axis as my polar axis and the origin as a pole. So what you see in your textbook, maybe those are drawn on XY coordinate system but as a polar equation. equation을 xy 평면에 그리는 거예요. xy 평면에 그리면서 x 액시스를 polar 액시스로 하고 그리는 거예요. Right. So I can put x and y like this. So this is x and this is y. But this is my polar axis and that's the pole, okay? Right. So when theta is zero, where is my point? Two. When theta is pi over four, where is my point? Two. Can you imagine the graph? What, what will it be? It will be a circle of radius two. Is that a function in terms of x and y? No, it is not. But in terms of r and theta, it is a function. r is two. R is 2. I can write that as a polar equation. R is 2 uh, in, in a simpler form. R is 2. So R equal to 2 is this. At any angle it is 2. Okay? Mm. How about R is minus 2? Ah, 
when r is minus 2 for the angle theta where is my point is it here no it is here uh-huh. when theta is pi over 2 is it here no it is here but still it becomes a circle of radius 2 okay so fill in the blanks in b let's read and let's fill in the blanks together she the graph of r equal to big r what's big r what's big r is any real number any real number can it be negative yes uh huh any real number okay so the graph of r equal to big r is what is a what circle right is a circle with the center at the where pole pole is the origin exactly and radius what r absolute value of r radius is always positive but r can be negative for example r equal to minus 2 the radius is 2 not minus 2 right so we have to put what absolute value of r any question any real number not zero when r is zero it's a point yeah Any question? Okay, next. Theta is pi over 4. So, again, remember it is R theta which satisfies this equation. Okay. So, for example, 0 pi over 4, does that satisfy this equation? Yeah. Mm. As long as angle is pi over 4, it is okay. So, this is actually collection of all r pi over 4, where r is any real number. So, for c, This is y, this is x, but my polar axis is x-axis, and this is the pole, and I'm drawing a polar equation on xy plane. That's what I'm doing. Okay, theta is pi over 4. So what do we do with my polar axis? Rotate pi over 4 degree, then it will be like that. Yep. Uh huh. And on that rotated polar axis, when r is zero, where is the corresponding point? At the origin, exactly. When r is bigger than zero, I can plot all, all the points here. When r is a negative number, I can plot all, all the points here. Agree? Okay, so what will be the graph? Line, exactly. It will be a line. Yep. Good. Pi over 4. So this is R0. For example, here, this is R2. Here, R is minus 2. Okay, so with that, let's fill in the blanks. The graph of theta, the graph of theta equal to theta zero is a what? Line, exactly. Is a line. Through uh-huh. the origin, through the pole, through the origin, exactly. At angle, mm, when theta is theta zero, when angle, uh, with the angle, 
theta zero, which is your given angle. Here, theta zero represents pi over four in this picture. <laughs> so at angle theta zero. Yes? Mm. Okay. What will this be? R is 1 over cosine theta plus sine theta. Any idea? Anyone? Oh, yeah. Go, go ahead. Speak up. Uh -huh. X plus Y. Good. X plus Y is what? If I multiply this through here, what do I get? R cosine theta plus r sine theta equals 1. And what's r cosine theta? x. x plus y equals 1. Yes. What is it? It's a line. If I move it here, right? Then it is r cosine theta plus r sine theta equals 1. x plus y equals 1. So it is a line. Make sense? What will this be? Ah, ah. Yeah, what is this? Move it. 시작! A X plus B Y is C. What is it? A line. So, when we're given in this form, this is a generic formula in R and theta for a line on X, Y plane. So, this is a x plus b y is c. Okay, so is a fill in the blank is a what line exactly? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Get it? Okay. All right. Now let's look at more interesting graphs. Let's read. She consider graphs of the form R equal to F of theta, where F is a continuous function of theta. So f is a continuous function of theta. What is a continuous function? From calculus 1, what are continuous functions that you know of? All three functions are continuous except tangent, cotangent, secant, cosecant. Sine and cosine are Continuous, right? Is ln continuous function? Natural log. What's the graph of ln? Continuous function. E to the x is continuous. Polynomials are continuous. Yep. Hyperbolic functions are continuous functions. Uh -huh. Theorem. She. Theorem. Suppose that f is a continuous function of theta and f of theta 0 is 0 
but f of theta is not zero for theta near theta zero, theta not equal to theta zero. Then, 시작. Then the graph of the polar equation r equal to f of theta approaches and leaves the pole at the angle of the line theta equal to theta zero as theta passes through theta zero. That is, the graph is tangent to the line theta equal to theta zero at the pole. So what it means is the following. I, I have this function, and when theta equal to theta zero, it is zero. So for example, suppose f of pi over four is zero. So polar axis and the pole. So this is pi over four. pi over 4 is 0, f is r. So at pi over 4, at theta 0, what's my r? 0. So where is the point? On this polar axis, where is the point? At the origin. Okay? At the origin. So it is here. Let's look at this angle. This angle is close to pi over 4. But according to our assumption, f of theta is not 0. f of theta is not 0 for theta near theta 0. So at this polar axis, the angle is close to pi over 4, but r is not 0. Okay? So, if R is positive, it will not be here, it will be somewhere here. So for the angle which is close to pi over 4, if R is positive, it, it will not be at here. It will not be here at the origin. It will be somewhere near the origin. Get it? Okay. So, what it says is, this is the line pi over 4 where f vanishes, f is 0. For other points, it leaves tangent to this line. So, the angle is close to pi over 4, r is not 0, but it leaves so that it is tangent, it leaves the origin, it leaves the pole, so that it is tangent to the line theta equal to pi over 4. So it is like this or like that. If r is negative, it will go like this. Okay, so keeping that in mind, let's look at an example. So let me clarify this using an example. So r is 1 minus cosine theta. So r is f of theta. What's f? What's f? 1 minus cosine theta. Exactly. Is that a function of theta? If I put in one angle, how many r do I get? Exactly one r. So it is a function, right? Aha, uh -huh, it's a function. Is that a continuous function? Yes, it is continuous function. Yep. Yeah? Okay. So where is it zero? So one minus cosine theta is zero. Where? Cosine theta is 1. So theta is 0, 2 pi, 4 pi, etc. Is that right? Okay. So R equal to F of theta. 
So if if I put data here, data is my independent variable. R is my dependent variable. It's a function. So if I draw the graph, what is cosine? This is cosine, right? Uh -huh. So minus cosine is? This is minus cosine, right? Uh -huh. So what is 1 minus cosine? Uh, up by 1. So do you agree that it will be like this? Agree? So this is 0, this is 2 pi, and this is pi, and at pi what is it? 2. Is this a function? Yes, it is a function in terms of R and theta. Now, when we draw the graph, we draw the graph on xy plane. Remember, this is not the graph of this polar equation. We have to draw the graph of polar equation on xy plane. Okay, so this is intermediate process. Let's draw the graph on xy plane. So this is x and this is y, okay? At angle when theta is zero, it is zero. So when angle theta is zero, it is zero. Other than that, is it zero or not? Until it gets to two pi, it is not zero. So this is zero, over here it's not zero, and when I come back to two pi, it is zero again. Get it? Okay. And so at zero, it is zero. At pi over two, at pi over two, what is it? At pi over two, what is it? One, right? So when theta is pi over two, how far do I go from the origin? One. When theta is pi, when theta is pi, how far do I go? Two. So will it be here or there? Here, right? Okay. And when theta is three pi over two, what is the corresponding r? One. So when it is three pi over two, it is one. So it is minus one actually on the xy plane. And when it comes back to 2 pi, it becomes tangent. It becomes tangent to theta equal to 2 pi. Do you see that this point, these parts and that parts are symmetric about pi? So the picture that I drew should be symmetric here and here. This is 0 to pi, pi to 2 pi. Get it? Okay, so let's draw this. So when theta is 0, it is 0. At pi over 2, it is 1. So at pi over 2, it is 1, 1. At pi, it is 2. At pi, it is 2. So it is actually minus 2 on the xy plane. At 3 pi over 2, it is 1. So it is actually minus 1. Yes? Mm -hmm. So, it leaves the pole tangent, increase, hit the one, keep increasing, hit two, keeps increasing. And the leftover will be symmetric. This and that are symmetric. So, I follow the same thing as the top one. Like this. What does this look like? It looks like a 
hard, yeah, uh -huh, hard. Actually, hard has more like non-smooth corner, but this is more smooth. This is called cardioid. What's cardiovascular disease? 심장병, right? 심장, heart. So it is cardioid. Cardioid. Okay, so the basis, this is what we, uh, this is uh, illustration of the theorem in the above uh, number and then to give you the background where the theorem came from, so this is the background of the theorem, why it is true. Let's read, 시작! A continuous function f of theta does not change sign between successive zeros. Successive, 연속되는 0을 만드는 점. 연, 연속되는 근 사이에서는 사인이 플러스였다가 마이너스가 될수 있어요? 없어요? It's not possible. It should be of one sign. If it is a continuous function, if I have a continuous function, if I have a continuous function, it is zero here, it is zero there, right? There are only two zeros, let's say, only two zeros, x1 and x2. Then, if it is positive, then it should be positive until I get to x2. If it is positive and negative, then by intermediate value theorem, it must go through another root, right? So it is all, only one sign, it does not change sign. If it is positive, it is positive until you get to the next zero. Get it? Okay, so what's positive loop and negative loop? So suppose theta at theta zero, we get r equal to 0 and theta, theta 1, we get r equal to 0 again. And when theta is between theta 0 and theta 1, can r be 0? If it is a continuous function, it is 0 at theta 0, 0 at theta 1, in between it is of one sign either positive or negative. Uh -huh. Or negative. So this is case one. Let's look at case one. This case. So this is xy plane. And let's say this is theta zero. Let's say this is theta 1. So at theta 0, it is 0. At theta, when angle is theta 0, it is 0. In between, it is positive. So here to there, my graph should that be in section 1 or section 2? When theta is theta 0, it is at 0, right? So as theta increase from theta 1 to theta 1, what's my r? Positive. So as theta increases from here to there, all the directions will be like this, yeah? And R is positive. So my loop should be in here or here, number one, number two. It should be in here, number one. So from zero, it leaves tangent, increase, it's a continuous function, and it should be tangent to this line as well. So as it increases, it must come back. Tangent to theta 1.
So in between theta one, theta zero to theta one, there are other angles. So angle is increasing like that, but R is positive. So it leaves the pole tangent to blue line, and then it has to come back so that it becomes zero again at the green line. Right? It must go like this. It leaves this line tangent, it's positive, so it stays here, but it has to come back because it is tangent to this line as well. Such a thing is called positive loop or negative loop. Positive loop. This is positive loop. Okay. When R is less than zero, let's look at this thing. When R is less than zero, then we get negative loop. Okay, so let's draw the negative loop. So at theta zero, it is zero. As theta increases, my point should be on the opposite side. So it is zero here. As theta increases, my points should be in the opposite side. And then, again come back to zero like this. That's negative loop. Does that make sense? As theta increases theta zero to theta one, R is negative, so it should be on this side. So as theta increases, it is negative loop, so it must go like this. On the opposite side. Yep. Okay. So we have positive loop and negative loop. That is because it is a continuous function, so it is of one sign between two successive zeros. So let's do an example illustrating that concept. R equal to two sine two theta. What is f of theta? What's the function? Two sine of two theta. Is that a continuous function? Yes, it is. Uh huh. It's a continuous function. So let's draw the graph of R theta as a reference. So this is theta. This R. Okay. So from 0 to 2 pi, usually how many loop do I get? I get one, one loop, but because it is 2 theta, I get two loops and the height. What's the maximum and minimum? 2 and minus 2, exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. So this is what we get. zeros. Zero, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, two pi. Okay. Do you see that they are all symmetric? Symmetric? What's the longest from the origin? Two, right? And what look? Positive look. What look? Negative loop, positive loop, negative loop, all symmetric, draw. Draw. Go ahead and draw. Yep.
Where do I start? Tell me, where do I start? Zero. Where do I go? Up or down? Up. Because it is positive loop. Do I go like this? I go nicely symmetric about pi over 4, right? How, how long? How long? 2. And then I have to come back. Positive loop, right? For here, pi over 2 to pi, it is a negative loop. So where do I draw? Here or here? Here, right? How? Like this. Yep. That covers this section. And for this, is it positive or negative? Positive. So nicely like that. Yep. Come back again. And for this, is it positive or negative? Negative. So it should be on the opposite side. assigned there. Okay, bye. Done. Uh-huh. Uh-huh.